I did not expect this bonnet to take 70 hours. I had it in my mind, perhaps 20, 30 hours tops, and this accessory for the 1860s Victorian berry dress ensemble would be complete. But the actual process had so much more in store. This is my very first time ever making a bonnet or any hat from scratch, as in not just decorating a pre-made straw form, so I didn't really know what to expect. But I'm pleased to announce that the final Victorian bonnet turned out far, far better than I thought it might. I turned to photo references on the Met website to get inspiration for my own design, and I've added some links in the description box as well to videos or blogs that helped me through this process. I really loved these three extant examples, so I decided to take inspiration from them. To be honest, the idea of making historical headwear like this completely from scratch is one that would have absolutely terrified me even just a few months ago. But I knew I needed to take the plunge and just go for it. The process began with cutting out the crown top, crown side, and brim pieces from a heavyweight millinery buckram. I've never worked with buckram before, so I was astounded actually by how difficult it is to cut into. I ended up having to cut out another brim piece because for the first one, I didn't add seam allowance where needed. I used Lynn McMaster's circa 1860s Civil War bonnet pattern for this construction. Then I traced out all the pieces on a lightweight cotton batting, adding seam allowance where necessary. Cutting pieces from the fashion fabric came next. These were very similar in size to the cotton batting pieces with similar amounts of seam allowance as well. Finally, it was time to cut the lining. Seeing these fabrics together got me excited once again to experience them paired up on the actual bonnet. In the end, there were a lot of pieces, three from each fabric, buckram, cotton batting, and two types of silk. I started by using millinery wire to strengthen the edges of the buckram pieces. I measured out the wire roughly and of course didn't have any wire cutters on hand, so I ended up destroying a pair of scissors trying to cut this wire. What can I say, desperate times call for desperate measures. Using some form of a quasi-blanket stitch, I carefully attached the wire all the way around each piece, starting with the top of the crown. As you can imagine, this part was extremely fiddly and took many, many hours to complete. I also taped the edges of the wire with some paper tape, that way it wouldn't go through the actual fabric once the bonnet is covered, and I overlapped the edges slightly to be able to sew them down as a single unit. I completed a similar process for the other two pieces, leaving some excess wire which will help with strengthening the brim in the future. I also notched any curves in order to make it easier to bend the pieces seamlessly. Then it was time to sew the center back seam of the side piece. The thing about buckram is each step of each stitch has to be done as its own movement. So with fabric, you can often take a stitch using just one movement, but with buckram, you have to take two movements, basically going down through the fabric and then back up. And this understandably slows down the entire process. Eventually though, the seam was complete and I folded down the notched edges at the stitch line to form a place for the top of the crown to be attached. I taped down the crown top just to hold it in place and proceeded to whip stitch the edges all around the two pieces, joining them together. I used this strong silk thread to make sure the bonnet wouldn't come apart anytime soon. Then it was time to add the brim. This was one of the most time consuming parts of this entire construction process because it required a lot of reshaping of the bonnet to get a form that I was content with. I sewed X's into each section of the brim where it meets at a tab and I messed this up the first time around it ended up warping the buckram so I had to repeat about half of the stitches. Theoretically, I could have left it as is but redoing my mistake I think was well worth it in the end for the final result. The primary structural form of the bonnet was finally complete. I sewed bias tape down to help cover up any rough edges from the wire to produce an overall smoother final result, and I just joined this to the buckram using messy large running stitches. The most complex part of this step was actually binding the awkward shaped corners, but in the end it worked out. I think those of us who love to sew get to go through the binding corners struggle together. Adding the cotton batting followed. These were each running stitched down to their respective sections, starting with the crown top, then followed by the brim. Once in place, the seam allowances were trimmed back so that they lined up evenly with the edges. Then it was the final crown side piece to complete and it met up with the other two sections. Its seam allowances also later getting cut back. I decided to use just a little bit of glue to help keep the very edge outside of the stitch line down. This is done to reduce bulk and warping once the actual bonnet will get covered with fabric. At last, it came time to actually start covering the bonnet, which felt like a long time coming at this point. In order to get a smooth surface, it's important to maintain a lot of tension. 
So as I pinned the crown top section down, I kept tugging at the edges to produce that stress. I also pinked the edges of the piece for some added security. And in the end, I was so pleased with the result. And I even joked with a friend that it would be the perfect surface for ice skating on. <laughs> Then it was on to covering the side piece with fabric. To do so, I first sewed together the center back seam of the fabric using back stitches, and then proceeded to tuck under the raw edges. I completely forgot to shoot footage of the final result with the brim fashion fabric also secured, but you'll get to see a wider shot shortly to view the result. At this point, I needed to make some bias tape to bind the edges, but like most individuals who sew, I tried to avoid this task for as long as humanly possible. Instead, I sewed down the only piece of lining I could before inevitably having to confront bias making doom. For securing the lining, using a curved needle was tremendously helpful. I'm not even sure that this would be very possible to complete without one, as buckram is not an easy fabric to bend with a straight needle. I also basted this section just in case to help keep it a little bit more stable. Finally, I couldn't avoid the binding any longer, so I cut a long strip of green silk, then ironed it in half. Then I ironed under both of the edges, and voila, bias tape. Using small whip stitches, which I tried to make as discreet as possible, I carefully sewed on the bias tape all around the edges of the bonnet. Once again, the corners were the most complicated part and required quite a bit of fabric manipulation. Everything was now fully covered and the outside was bound. I could now concentrate just on the lining and the trimmings. This bonnet needed a bavelle, which is that curtain section that you tend to see on the back of bonnets. So I cut out a piece of doubled up silk cut on a fold and proceeded to hem any of the raw edges. Finally, I ran a gathering stitch and it looked quite cute once it was all gathered up, honestly. Cautiously, I pinned the ballet into place. I decided to secure it in a way that the lining would go over it and therefore cover the raw edge at the top in order to save time having to hem the top edge essentially and to reduce some visible bulk. I tried on the bonnet at this point to see if I was happy with how the ballet looked and ultimately decided to raise it up a little bit higher, which required some repinning. Then whip stitches secured down the raw edge of the bavelet on the inside of the bonnet. Eventually, I was able to continue on with the lining. Securing the side piece, again utilizing that handy curved needle to join the lining pieces together with whip stitches. I also sewed some whip stitches at the point where the lining meets the bavelet, just to provide that section with a little bit more security and to help the bonnet endure the test of time. And finally, it was time for the brim lining. Initially, I was just going to sew a flat piece on and then decorate it heavily with flowers, as in my initial sketch. But in the end, I felt instead I'd like to give a different technique a try, shirring. I had never done shirring before, so I said to myself, sure, why not? I'm so sorry about my awful pun. <laughs> shirring is essentially a bunch of rows of gathering arranged as to create a rippled or textured effect. This technique was really commonly used for Victorian bonnets, especially the ones with less decoration at the inside of the brim. For this piece, I needed five rows of gathering stitches, so here's some cool time-lapse footage of gathering. In the end, it produced a beautiful result. The real reason I opted for shirring is because I felt it mimics the texture of a raspberry very well, with all the ridges and the dimples. Additionally, because of the shot silk, the differences in texture really play with light and produce a greater depth of color, which only exacerbates that berry mimicking quality. The shirred piece had to be pinned into place, which was actually a bit complex, and then it was sewn down all around the edges with whip stitches. I tried again to make these as discreet as possible. Here is the gorgeous final outcome. The end finally felt in sight, and I went on to make ribbons to tie a grand bow. I meticulously cut two pieces of fabric, measuring and trimming them down as similar as possible in order to have the two final ribbons match. Once cut, each was folded in half, then backstitched, and then the corners were clipped. I also sewed a stitch or two at a curve at the corners, just in order to produce sharper edges, which feels like a magic trick every single time. I finally purchased a loop turner, by the way, so I no longer need to suffer through attempting to flip a ribbon like this right side out, which is very unlike my experience whilst making the 1890s walking suit earlier this year. Thanks to all who recommended I buy one in the comments section of that walking suit construction video. Both ribbons were neatly ironed for a crisp finish, and then sewn onto the tab-like part of the bonnet using fine whip stitches. This historical fashion accessory now became completely wearable and it just needed to be trimmed. Many different options ran through my head for how to trim the bonnet. I felt in this case I wanted something more on the simple side that maintained the same continuity of the rest of the ensemble. I gathered a strip of fabric and created this poofy bit, pinning it down along the seam join where the brim and crown meet. I then secured this down with whip stitches, adjusting each ruffle a little bit to create as much uniformity and texture as possible. Again, this ruffled texture helps to mimic that of a berry, and the green underneath is reminiscent of a bush. 
The final step was to create the flower buds. I joined together a few of these vintage white silk flowers, and then took the same 1940s berry buds I incorporated in the Swiss waist, and then added them amongst the flowers. This is meant to represent berries when they're first forming, and some of them still remain in bloom. I wanted initially to create three of these, but decided upon just two, as it added a sweet yet very subtle touch. I figure as well in the future, if I'd like something a little bit more outlandish, I can always just add more of these buds. I'm not even really sure how I sewed these down, but basically I just stitched discreetly wherever I could and then they were secure enough to stay put. After completing this bonnet, I almost had a slight feeling of emptiness. This project had consumed my evenings for many, many days and many hours. I also can't believe that the only part left of the berry dress ensemble is the bodice. Ironically, the bodice will likely require half as many hours to sew as this bonnet. It's still wildly perplexing to me how long a simple headpiece can take to make from scratch. I have a profoundly deep respect for professional milliners. I will be taking this upcoming week off for the holidays, and I hope you all get some rest and relaxation and get to work on some creative projects that fill up your internal cup. The final part of this berry dress series will be released on December 30th, 2021, just in time for the new year. So I will see you all then for the construction of the bodice and the final reveal of the entire ensemble. I'm so excited for you all to see what I've created and how I decided to further accessorize the ensemble. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all then for the final installment.